Everybody's heard about the bird. Bird, bird, bird. The bird's a winner. Well, the bird, bird, bird. Bird is a winner. Well, the bird, bird, bird. Well, the bird is a winner. Well, the bird, bird, bird. The bird's a winner. Well, the bird, bird, bird. Well, the bird is a winner. Well, the bird, bird. The bird's a winner. Well, don't you know about the bird? Well, everybody knows that the bird is a winner. Hello, fellow Menno nerds. I hope you're all doing well. It is a rainy day here in Kansas City. We've had a lot of rain over the last month, and we're hoping it dries out a little bit here. I've really been enjoying the discussion as we have moved from talking about books, talking more about uh, the concept of story, and that's played out in some really beautiful posts, really interesting ways it's been discussed. Uh, Michael and Alan both talked about uh, the concept of testimony as story, and uh, and I really like that. I want to talk about that more in just a second. And Alan, in particular, mentioned the witness of the martyrs, and he asked us to uh, talk about our favorite uh, martyrs, people who have served as examples. Um, the first uh, martyr story that I was introduced to uh, is that of uh, Dirk Willems, uh, who you can look up on Wikipedia. I won't I won't tell you his story here, but and I know that's kind of cheating because that's a really popular story, so it's one of everybody's favorites, but it's a good one, I think. Paul talked a little bit about um, testimony and um, lived expressions of faith, and this kind of ties into what Michael and Alan both were saying. I am interested in the concept of testimony, not just as a story that you get up and tell at the front of church, but uh, as, as lived expressions. Um, and that's something that our brothers and sisters, the Quakers, do really well. Uh, the Quakers, uh, as you may or may not know, have um, the testimonies of peace, equality, integrity, community, um, simplicity, which is where the testimony of plain dress came from. Not too many uh, Quakers followed the testimony of plain dress anymore. Uh, and, uh, and stewardship is, is the other. Um, and so what the Quakers call testimony are actually uh, sort of ethical guidelines for living out their faith. So I think that's kind of an interesting spin on the concept of testimony. Uh, and uh, Deborah spoke about suffering being at the heart of the gospel, and uh, that's an idea that really, really resonates with me. I love um, the work of uh, Jürgen Moltmann has been really influential on me. Uh, and for Moltmann, suffering is, I mean, it really is the crosses at the core of the gospel. Um, my question to put to all of you today, um, something that I'm interested in is, what extent do we allow story to dictate our lives? I remember several years ago, I was sitting in a restaurant over lunch uh, with two of my friends who disagree about scripture and one of them says uh, well I don't think it matters whether or not Elijah was a real person he could have just been created by the early authors of scripture his story is still valid his uh, the the scriptural accounts that talk about the things that Elijah did um, and said uh, they still have importance to how we live our lives. Uh, and the other person said, no, that's, that's not true. It's, of course it matters if Elijah never existed, because if Elijah never existed, there's no point to any of it. So that's just kind of what I've been thinking about as I've been watching your videos. I think this discussion has been a good one, and uh, I look forward to hearing more from each of you. Thanks. Bye-bye.